It is nine o'clock and this is Pam with 44 Marketplace and Custom Finishes by Pam. Tonight is day one of our Back to Basics painting because so many people have questions about the basics. I love to do intricate finishes, but today is day one of our five Back to Basics lessons. So, um, if you're here, let me know you're here. If you have questions, please let me know what your questions are because we are going to answer as many of them as possible. I'm not one who likes a lot of talking in a video, but there's a few things we need to get out of the way while everybody's coming on. Hey, Sandy. Okay, the first thing that I get asked when I teach uh, my beginner classes is what can Dixie Belle be used on? Dixie Belle can be used on a nice piece of wood furniture like is seated behind me. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Alan. Or you can use it on laminate. You can use it on metal. You can use it on concrete. You can use it on glass. You can use it on fabric. You can use it on so many things. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. There are so many things that you can use it on. So that's why we're doing this Back to Basics because I want you guys to know how easy peasy this is to use and what you can use it on. When I tell you how easy it is to use, I'm not kidding. It's seriously that easy. If you ever have a doubt, my camera keeps losing me, I don't know what's going on. If you ever have a doubt, remember I used to do computers. So if I can do computer programming and such and do this, then anybody can do it, right? Okay, the first thing you're gonna wanna get is Find your local retailer or hit me up and I'll send you one of these. It is a Dixie Bell how-to booklet, okay? This is going to tell you exactly how to do a lot of things, but we're going to go over it tonight. All right, the other thing is Dixie Bell has this fantastic new color chart with all 64 of the new colors. It also has the products listed on the back. If you don't have a local retailer, send me a private message with your address and I'll send you one of these and one of these so that you can kind of get on board with what we got going on, okay? All 64 colors and the how-to booklet. I'll send that to you in the mail. You just send me your address. Um, and tonight, we are all about what can I paint with Dixie Belle? You can paint anything you want to, just about it. The other question is, how much paint will I need? Okay, that is an easy question. Um, this is Dixie Belle's new farmhouse green. Hey guys, hey Carrie. Um, this is Dixie Belle's Farmhouse Green, okay? This is the color I used the other day. I think I've got the spoon up here so you guys can see. I'm under fluorescent light and I know it sucks and I'm sorry. Um, these are the new colors. This is Farmhouse Green. This is Coffee Bean, a very nice black brown. This is in the navy. It's a true navy. And this is Aubergine. Can you see how beautiful an eggplant color that is? Okay. Um, if you get an 8-ounce container of Dixie Bale, okay, if you get an 8-ounce container of Dixie Bale, this will cover a dresser, okay? This amount of paint will cover a dresser. If you don't have a local retailer that can hook you up with some paint, shop with me. I'm at 44marketplace.com. I'm on Facebook. I've got all of the colors, all 64 of them. I've got everything. The first thing you want to do is clean your pieces with white lightning, okay? And of course, I don't have it here. Hold tight. <laughs> so much for prep, right? Okay, this is Dixie Bell White Lightning. Can you see that? Of course, it's backwards, but this is Dixie Bell White Lightning. It's a granular product okay? And it is great for cleaning. It cleans and deglosses. That's the first thing you're going to want to do because I don't care how clean your house is or whatever. You want to clean it and degloss it and get it ready for paint. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. All right, so once you've got it clean, you want to you want to put two heaping tablespoons of this in warm water let it dissolve. It dissolves quick. I mean, really quickly. Put it in a spray bottle, spray it on whatever you're cleaning, and then spray it with warm water to rinse off any residue. 
Now, that's what Dixie Bell recommends. I can tell you I don't always do that, and I haven't had a problem, but you're supposed to remove all the residue. Okay, now we've got it cleaned. Now we're ready to paint. If your piece has a cracked finish, the old varnish is cracking or whatever, then you may need to sand a little. When Dixie Bell says no prep, they are talking about if you don't have a cracked finish. If you got some cracking going on or splintering or something like that, pull out a sanding sponge, sand it a little. It won't take you any time. Do you use a rag with white lightning? Yes. I just put it in a Mr. Bottle or in a regular old spray bottle. This is what mine's in, and it doesn't even look like it has anything in it. I just spray this on my piece, spray, 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 wipe it down, and then I have another bottle that has water written on the side of it so I know which bottle is which. Spray it down, wipe it off, and give it five minutes to dry and then start painting. But if you do have a cracked finish, you will need to sand a little because you got to, you know? You've got, this is paint. This is not a cure-all, okay? So once you've got all that done, then you're ready to paint. Well, the amount of paint you need depends on what kind of finish you're going to put on there. If you want, I'm, I, we're going to mess with this piece tonight. Um, if you want a finish that is light like this piece, then you're not going to want to put much paint on. But if you want a nice, solid finish, a pristine finish, then you're going to want to put a little bit more paint on there, okay? So, I don't know why my phone keeps losing focus. Sorry, guys. Um, you're going to want to put a little bit more paint on there. But if you're going to distress it, keep in mind, the more paint you put on, the more paint you're going to have to take off. If your piece is a mid-century modern piece, red mahogany, this is going to be your best friend, okay? Boss. It stands for Blocks, Odors, and Stain. Thank you, Sandy. This blocks odors and stains. So if you have a piece that smells like smoke, or you have a piece that is mid-century red mahogany, you may want to go ahead and start with boss. Most of the time, this is not needed. But if you have a piece that you're worried about bleeding through your paint, this is what you're going to want. All right, so now we're painting. All right, um, typically people ask me, what kind of brushes do I use? These are the brushes I use. I use Klingon brushes. You can tell by the handle of mine. Mine is heavily used, okay? What about this Klingon brush? Have you ever seen one like this? This one is flipping awesome. If you have corners that you need to paint, you are going to love this brush. I mean, it's the bomb diggity. This is what a nice new Klingon brush looks like. It's awesome. Um, you can also use other types of brushes. Klingon brushes are an investment. If you're not going to paint a lot of things, you may not want to invest the money in a 20-something dollar Klingon brush. But chip brushes, inexpensive. You can get them for a buck or two. You can use those with the paint. If you're just getting started, do that. Don't spend the money. Um, there's also Paint Bixie. Now, I will tell you, Paint Pixie brushes are fabulous. If you're doing cabinet doors or something like that, look at the way this one's shaped. It's perfect for doing that. That being said, we have a new line of brushes by Chalk Pro and they are plush brushes. Can you see that? They even make an angled brush. How cool is this? With a short handle. So these are the ones that I've been trying out for some friends, but really it depends on what you want your investment to be. If you're doing a picture frame or your first little piece, you may only want to invest in an inexpensive brush and get painting. So do that. Paint, paint, paint. Whichever brush you decide, put your paint on any way you want to. And I'm going to tell you another thing. When you are putting the paint on, make sure your brush is damp. I use a Mr. Bottle. I don't know if you can see, but see how that is a fine mist? Well, for dampening your paintbrush, there's nothing like it. If you use a regular spray bottle, you may get too much water on your brush and it may make your paint too drippy. Um, we are going to spin this around, and you guys are going to see, we are going to put some paint on this little piece behind me. This is the piece we're going to monkey with this week while we are learning. Sorry about jostling you around. hope I didn't make you sick. All right. Um, when you're painting, you can paint up and down. You can paint back and forth. You can paint whichever way you want. And it depends on what you want your finish to be. Do you want a heavy coat of paint, or do you want a light coat of paint? This 
this brush gives a great coat of paint. And like I say, find your local retailer. If you don't have a local retailer, there's over a thousand of us. If you don't have one, I'll be happy to be yours. I've shipped to five states just between Saturday and today. So I would love to help you out. All right. So we're going to put our paint on. And it dries so fast. Um, if you're in the southeast where the humidity is like 100%, then you may it may take a little longer to dry. Because i got to tell you, it was uh, humid, thus the hair and the face today at 90 some odd degrees here. I think it was 93 degrees over here. Um, chip brushes, I'm sorry to say, will leave bristles behind in your pieces. You know, you get what you pay for, and if you pay a buck or two, you're gonna get that. These, I think, retail for about 10 bucks, and I have not had a problem with losing any bristles, and I have been trying them. Okay, so this is what we're doing. We're putting a little bit of paint on this piece. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but we have painted this one wall right here, and it was just that quick. I have painted almost this entire piece, and I've probably used three ounces of this paint at the most. All I have is this middle shelf and this bottom shelf. So when I say it goes a long way, I'm serious. Eight ounces of paint goes a long way. So tonight's lesson, what we've learned... Do I prep the wood? All I do is clean it with Dixie Bell White Lightning, and that is my prep. No matter if I'm using wood, vinyl, nothing. I have those brushes online. They're by Chalk Pro. They're their plush. I don't know why I can't say that today. They're their plush line. This is what it looks like. This is the label. Some of the other Dixie Bell retailers may carry it, but I do carry it on my website and on my Facebook page. But I gotta tell you, for 10 bucks, it's a good investment. All right, so once I start putting the paint on, and now keep in mind, I would use this same brush if I were painting a laminate. Vinyl, if I'm painting the vinyl seat of a chair or a leather top on a desk, no matter what I'm painting, I would probably use the same brush. I would use the same Mr. Bottle to keep my brush damp. Um, I would use the same kind of paint. So tonight what we've learned is cleaning, choosing your brush, and choosing the amount of paint you need to use because it really depends on your finish. And I know you guys are as addicted to Pinterest as I am. So when you're trying to figure out a finish for a piece, go on Pinterest. You don't have to rebuild the Taj Mahal. And if you find a finish that you're not sure about, hit up your Dixie Bell retailer. I'll be happy to help you. But you know what? There's probably a retailer in your neighborhood that would love to help you. So if you find a finish that you want to do, do that. I mean, they're great at it. They'll help you estimate the amount of paint you need. Um, I mean, you know what? The odds of you needing this much, this is a 32-ounce paint, okay? Okay. This is 32 ounces of paint. Do you know that I order 32 ounce paints when I'm doing kitchen cabinets? That's when I use 32 ounces of paint because it doesn't take that much. It's very easy to do. It dries very quickly. If you're doing fabric, we're going to talk about that this week. Uh, we're going to talk about doing metal. We're going to talk about doing glass. We're going to talk about a little bit of everything this week because I want to do basics. The website, um, my website is 44marketplace.com, and you can shop on my Facebook page too, Ashley. Okay, so any more questions? I'm not going to keep you guys but about 15 or 20 minutes every night because I don't want to take up your whole evening. I know you guys may still have kids at home or dogs or something like that or husbands that need your attention, but tonight what we're talking about is putting our paint on. We're going to talk about distressing. We're going to talk about glazing. We're going to talk about waxing. How often do I need to mist my brush? Well, I am analytical because I used to do computers. So typically I do it every third brush. I don't know why. I don't know why that came into being, but I do it about every third swish with my brush. If you happen to feel your brush dragging when you brush the paint on, you need more moisture in your bristles. That is how I know. Um, and, you know, I have to, I, I do this seven days a week. So, 
Laura, see, that Mr. Bottle makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? I mean, I use mine. I have one here. I have one at my warehouse where I paint. I have one in my home studio. I have Mr. Bottles literally everywhere. In fact, I just saw, I have two in this room with me right now because it makes painting so easy. I mean, so easy. Um, if you guys don't have any more questions, then I will let you go. I did want to kind of go over this with you, but every night at 9 p.m., we're going to do this this week. It's only going to be about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, another thing we're going to go over quickly tonight is scrubby soap. A lot of people ask me, how do I keep my brushes, make them last so long? Girl, the secret is scrubby soap. It is a soap with a little sponge made in it. It is the bomb diggity. And you know what? I got paint all over my clothes. But if I wear clothes that don't have paint on them, that I don't want to be painting, I put the scrubby soap on there. And then when I get home, I throw them in the washer and the paint actually comes out. See? Alicia has been misting her furniture instead of her brush. So see, everybody uses their mister bottle differently. So you guys, if you don't have a mister bottle, I do sell them. You can get them lots of different places. I sell them for about 10 bucks a piece. Um, and they are worth the investment. I'm telling you, if you don't have one, you need to grab one. And these brushes, gotta tell you, I love it. Oh, you wanna see how I paint the back of it? All right, well, let's paint that then. All right. Keep in mind now, if you guys want a paint color chart and a how-to booklet, I'll send you one that doesn't have paint on it. I've gotten paint on mine because I get paint on half of everything. The reason you want to use an angled brush when you're painting the back of things, this gets you all the way up in the corners, okay? So you want to make sure that this gets all the way up in the corners. And it keeps you right on line. Can you see that? And when you paint the bottom corner, Flip your brush around and make sure you have that down in the bottom. It gets you all over in your corners. If you use a straight brush, it's a little harder to get in those. These are Chalk Pro. Sorry. There you go. Can you see it for the glare? These are great brushes and they're not quite the uh, investment that you have in the uh, Klingon brushes. Now, I love my Klingons. I'm not giving those up. Don't misunderstand me because I paint cabinets and everything. But I got to tell you, these brushes are winning me over. All right. There you go. What do you think, Jen? Um, you can go, this one, the grain goes up and down. It doesn't really matter. I used to always go with the grain. But now I just go with whatever makes my finish the neater. Because this one, once it's got such a slick back, you really can't see the grain at all. Okay, so if anybody has questions, hit me up. I am the admin at 44marketplace.com. And I will be happy to help you with what I can. Again, everything that I've shown you tonight, if you can't find it at your local retailer, I'll be your local retailer. I'd love to help you. I've got the brushes, the paint, the mister bottles, and I'll be happy to send you whatever you need. If you do, do have questions after you watch this, do I, what do you think about spray on chalk paint? Girl, I spray chalk paint every day. Every single day I spray chalk paint. I have an Erlex 5500 spray station, and I spray paint every single solitary day because I love the way it sprays. I put an ounce to two ounces of water to eight ounces of paint, and it sprays like 90. Okay, so I'll see you guys tomorrow night, 9 p.m., and if you want a reminder, be sure and send me a live alert on the post that I put up about the Back to Basics classes. Thanks for watching, guys, and y'all have a great evening.